16-8 intermittent fasting is very effective, but there might be something better out there. How frequently should we be fasting to get the maximum fat loss? Like the definition of insanity, according to Einstein, is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. So if intermittent fasting in a 16-8 fashion works for us, Yes, we should stick to it because it works, but if we are expecting a new result, doing the same thing over and over again, then we're really not thinking clearly. So what I wanted to do in this video is break down the research so that we can identify the optimum time to fast as far as frequency is concerned. Because 16-8 implies that we're just doing a short fast relatively frequently, and there's a lot of data that can really help us fine tune the right amount. Let's do it. So first we look at gene expression, which might scare you away from this video at first, but I'm going to really make it simple. Gene expression is just where we are ultimately allowing certain genes to come to fruition. Okay, so when we express genes, those genes become activated, for lack of a better term. So there was a study that was published in the Journal of Lipid Research that was interesting because it looked at different lengths of fasting and how genes were expressed based upon the length. Now, this first study is a rodent model study, so we can't take all the data from it to heart, but we can use it as a reference point. So it had rodents either just eat ad libitum, however much they wanted to, or do a 46-hour fast. What we learned from this is that the rats that did a 46-hour fast had a 70% decrease in glucose utilization genes. They got worse at utilizing glucose, which doesn't really, like, Surprise me, right? Because if you're not eating food, you're gonna get worse at utilizing carbs. But there was a 50% increase in fat oxidation. And what that tells us is that while they were going through fasting, their body upregulated all the genes associated with burning fat. Now, I don't expect everyone to go out and do a 46 hour fast. That's pretty lengthy, and this is a rodent model study. So how do we expand or at least extrapolate more relevant data? Well, with that, there was a study published recently in 2022 in Scientific Reports. This one had subjects eat at 8 a.m., 2 p.m., and 8 p.m., compared to an 18-6 style fasting fashion where they ate at 12 p.m., 4 p.m., and 8 p.m. Now, what's wild is they did this for five days in a row. Five days of 18-hour fasts, six-hour eating window in a row, and on the sixth day, they gave subjects a high-fat meal. This is where it gets really wild. The group that did intermittent fasting for five days burned more fat from that high-fat meal. They oxidized fat better than the group that didn't fast. So what that tells us is that when we are doing these bursts, that might work really well. So what we're learning from this is that maybe we occasionally burst. Maybe we occasionally do like three, four, five days of 18 hour style fasting in a row and then take some time off. I call this burst fasting. It's actually been a thing in my arsenal for a while, but that still doesn't give us a solid answer because this is not complete data. So let's dive in more. What about understanding when we start to lower our metabolism too much with fasting? So we can look at what is advantageous, what allows us to burn more, but then we can also look at the other side. Like what do we not want to do? What's going to cause a decrease in our metabolism? Well, with that, we look at a relatively new study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Had subjects do one week of overfeeding, followed by three weeks of caloric restriction, followed by two weeks of mild refeeding. And what they found is that during the severe caloric restriction phase, at 50% of their caloric intake for three weeks, they had a 266 calorie reduction in their resting energy expenditure. They burned 266 calories less at rest. 108 of those calories were from what's called adaptive thermogenesis. So that means that just the body adjusting its metabolism, they are burning 266 less calories. Now, I will say that adding protein into the mix helps, okay? They can like, even when you're in a deficit like this, adding protein into the mix can like decrease the amount your metabolism slows down. But what we learned from this is that if you just 16 ate fast every day, you are putting yourself in a caloric restriction category, making it so that you're essentially putting yourself at risk for these same metabolic slowdown risks. So what's the counter to this? Well, with this, we look at a study that was published in the British Journal of Nutrition, took a look at subjects that did 12-hour fasts, 36-hour fasts, or 72-hour fasts. They found that at 36-hour fasts, 
the metabolism increased. That's right, it increased. You would think everything would shrink, but it increased, and it increased because of norepinephrine. So 36 hours seemed to be this point in which the metabolism actually turned around and started going faster. But at 72 hours, it was no better than it was at 36. So as far as increasing benefit, we might not get much more out of a 72 hour fast than we would get out of a 36 hour fast. Pretty wild, right? So with this, it's easy to say, okay, well that settles it, a 36 hour fast. But then we don't know how frequently, things like that. So right now we have sort of two potential winners. A 36 hour fast, like once a week, which is called a monk fast, I love doing those anyway. Or we have like four or five day, 18 hour burst fasts where we burst for a few days and then take some time off. Okay, now we're gonna dive into a little bit more understanding glucose tolerance and autophagy because this completes it and gives us the exact amount that might be perfect for us. Now, I popped a link down below for foods that you can eat during your eating window as well. So Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store. They are a sponsor on this channel. They are what allows us to create this content so that we can keep doing what we do at warp speed. But also the link down below shares foods that I would recommend when you are in your eating window. Okay, so Thrive Market is a grocery store that's online. It delivers everything to your doorstep, but you also save 30% off your entire first order with them. So stock up your grocery cart. That way you can save 30% off your entire order, plus get a free $50 gift. Trust me, it'll change how you shop because you can sort by diet category, by keto, by whatever. So that link is in the top line of the description right underneath this video, and it's perfect for people that are doing a fasting lifestyle. Okay, glucose tolerance. What this means is like when we fast, our body gets so good at using fat that it kind of forgets how to use carbs. And you might be thinking, that's fine with me. I want my body to use fat. But then what happens when you eat carbs? Your body's so good at using fat, where are those carbs gonna go? Those carbs are gonna have a higher propensity to get stored because your body just looks for fats. So with this, we look at a study that was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology. It gave subjects a meal after a 13 hour fast or a 72 hour fast. And what they found is at the end of the 72 hour fast, they were not able to utilize carbohydrates very well. Okay, their glucose intolerance increased. They lost their ability to use glucose. But just like the other study we talked about earlier, they increased their ability to use fat. Well, what is this telling us in this particular case? Well, with longer fasts, like 36 hours to 72 hours, you have such an increase in growth hormone as a protective mechanism to spare your muscle that it actually becomes somewhat of an encumbrance and impedes insulin. So growth hormone is good for us, but it also can lead to insulin resistance if it's chronically elevated. That's why if people are taking exogenous growth hormone, monitoring insulin becomes very important. So what do we do here? Well, we're looking for a sweet spot, right? Like we gotta find this sweet spot because 72 hours is too long, 36 might be too long and impractical. Now we look at a study that was published in the journal Endocrinology and very fascinating. It had subjects do three 24 hour fasts on non-consecutive days, so no back-to-back -back fasting, 24-hour fast with some days off, 24-hour fast in a week. These 24-hour fasts infrequently increased glucose tolerance. That's right. It actually increased the ability to utilize glucose properly. So it looks as though by looking at this, this 24-hour window might be exactly what we want, but there's one more little thing to look at. Okay. Autophagy. Now autophagy is the cellular recycling and you probably know what that is. And it's very good for longevity, very good for our health in general. Study published in Cell Reports took a look at people that went through caloric restriction over the course of either three years or all the way up to 15 years. So just people that restricted calories. They found the longer that people had been in a mild caloric restriction phase, the more they had increases in LC3A, which is the autophagy gene, increases in heat shock protein 70, and other genes and markers associated with fat loss. What this tells us is very important. It tells us that the longer people are adopting a lifestyle that allows them to be in somewhat of a deficit, whether it's fasting or not, the longer that you just can allow yourself to do that as a lifestyle, you continue to get benefits. The benefits don't just get somewhere and then plateau they continue to get better. So the bottom line, first and foremost, is do what you can stick to that allows you to be in a moderate deficit most of the time. No, you're not gonna waste away because protein's gonna allow you to spare muscle and you can have days where you go higher. So bottom line, first rule, do what you can stick to. If 16-8 works for you, do it. Okay, but based upon this data, I see two pathways. One to two times per week of 24-hour fasting, 
because that's where you get metabolic increase, you still get glucose tolerance, and you're right in the sweet spot of fatty acid oxidation without ever having a decrease. That's pretty cool. The other option is going to be the burst fasting. Four or five days in a row of 18 or 20 hour fasts in like a sort of a one OMAD or two MAD fashion. Then take three weeks off of fasting and do it again. That way you're maintaining the integrity and the fat loss effects of a fast. I'll see you tomorrow.